Welcome back everyone. Now to the dangerous new trend where models are posting super skinny pictures of themselves online. Yeah, it's called Thinstagram or Thinspiration. Here to tell us more, we're joined by teen and body image expert Danielle Miller. Danny, welcome back. Now, Thank um, you. let's look at uh, some of these pictures. We'll put some mm. up here. So this is a uh, high profile model, Alexa Chung. Uh, she's come under fire for glorifying it. Uh, even Miranda Kerr, who always seems to promote a healthy body image, she's now being criticised for it as well. And, you know, young girls idolise these models. You're worried about the message it sends, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I mean, look, we don't want to be demonising girls who are naturally thin and healthy. That's fantastic. But when the only vision of beauty that's presented to young women is one that's ultra thin, then that is problematic because at the end of the day, particularly teen girls, are being heavily influenced by media images. And if they're being presented with these images of femininity that really don't take up much space, then we know that has an Im impact. And the research clearly shows that. We know on any given day in high school, it's up to 80% of girls will be dieting and one in five will actually go to extreme measures including purging and using laxatives in order to fit this ultra thin ideal. Mm. Because there are websites aren't there Danny mm. you know dedicated to promoting anorexia uh, and now it's becoming a trend to post these pictures online yeah. which is worrying. It is and I think a lot of parents would be really surprised at just how common this is. I mean there are certainly many social media pl platforms including particularly Tumblr that really do glorify this ultra thin and they become aspirational so girls will share tips on how they can reach a particular size or they'll post pictures of ultra thin models who they want to aspire to be like and it becomes if you like a normalizing platform so that really young people start to see this behavior as being part of the everyday and it's often also masqueraded as being part of health and fitness so that's where it becomes really difficult because as a parent if you saw your daughter joining a social networking platform that was supposedly about health and fitness, you'd think that was a positive. Mm. But if you actually dig under the surface, often the messages are things like, you know, nothing feels as good as skinny, nothing tastes as good as, as skinny, skinny feels. feels. Mm. And so it is really important that we be vigilant and it's really important that we talk about health, not just size. So let's say you're a parent, you're looking over your daughter's, uh, your teenage daughter's stuff or, you, you know, mm. you're, you're sitting with her computer with her or whatever. She's pulling up photos. I mean, who are, and I don't want to call them offenders yeah. because they may not be doing this on purpose to promote this. They're just they just become the poster children for it, but mm. who are the people that they should look out for? Well, look, in terms of models, I mean, most high fashion models, particularly if they do catwalk, will, will fit this sort of coat hanger ideal shape because that's what the fashion industry unapologetically demands from its models. What we have to realise is that that look, that particular size and shape, is something that we can't all achieve. We're just not genetically coded mm. to look like that. But not all those high fashion models are posting pictures of themselves looking no. very thin. So. Danny, who, which ones are? Who, who seems to be doing it more often? Well, well we see that Kate Moss is a re repeat offender. Um, lately we've seen, on, particularly on Instagram, Miranda Kerr is also posting pictures that look to us as being somewhat problematic. And the problem is, of course, there's nothing wrong with looking diverse and having different body shapes and sizes. But when teen girls do start to diet excessively, that can often trigger eating disorders in them. And they are incredibly complex illnesses to treat so mm. we need to be vigilant and proactive. What can mum and mums and dads do in a situation like this? Sit their, their drawers down and try and explain this to them? Yeah I think education is really key. I mean we can't block all of these things out can no. we? We can't you know raise our children in ivory towers so we do need to really educate them. We also need to model good practices at home so don't go on diets and talk about body shape excessively at home because our children aren't just influenced by media they're mm. influenced by us as well mm. and encourage your children to realize that they're more than just their body shape. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, it's Dan. always great to have you on. Thank and if you. you're struggling with it, an eating disorder, uh, you can call the specialist helpline 1300 550 236. Thanks, Danny.